everyone and welcome to Tackle the Feelings Before the Behaviour. And this is blog 44 and it's called Separation Anxiety in Children. And my name's Paula and today I wanted to just talk about this as if I would be talking to a family or parents in one, one of the sessions I do in my job. Because this is a topic that I see again and again and again. So if you are a parent struggling with separation anxiety or symptoms of separation anxiety with your little one, don't feel alone. This is actually a very common issue, especially I work with under five years old. This is huge, especially coming coming into going into kindergarten, out of kind, into kindergarten from daycare or transitioning into prep or some countries call that different things, but transitioning into school, big school, is always huge for kids. So around that time, you'll often see that, but this can actually get into a more disordered state as well, and it can create a lot of problems in the home and down the track as well. So if you're watching this, you're probably wanting to do something about the separation anxiety, or you're having trouble getting your child to transition into something. So this is the video for you. I probably won't be able to give you a magic wand solution, unfortunately. Those I don't think exist in parenting. But I can hopefully point you in the right direction and get you thinking about things a bit differently. Because that's really my goal here, is to get you to think about things a bit differently. Have a different framework to come from. Because often we're just coming from what our parents did and what our parents did. And if we don't want to do what our parents did, we're often left in this big unknown, which creates a lot of anxiety. So things that cause separation anxiety that I've witnessed is if something big has happened, if there's a loss, change or grief in the home, like a, a death in the family is a good example, often that really, that, that shakes things up in the home, the stability and security waver which leads me into the core emotion behind separation anxiety, which I'm sure if any of you have been following my work would identify as fear. Anxiety is a fear-based disorder. Anxiety generally on its own is categorized as excessive worry. Not just worry, but excessive worry, excessive stress, excessive fear. So separation anxiety is that fear, but the, the main crux of it is really, is basically that relationship with you, that connection, that sense of belonging. So reasons for this separation anxiety aren't necessarily to do with the relationship. They could be external situations going on, such as what I was talking about, grief, loss, change, transitions, something new, something unknown, something scary. But we can also get Anxiety, where the child is not feeling emotionally safe in a lot of different ways. And that comes from different parenting things like inconsistency, changes to rules and routines, developmental stages, under-regulating emotions, not because you mean to, but because you're just not picking something up, or a range of different things. But usually it happens when the parent is struggling to teach the child how to be independent is struggling to let that go and to allow the child to be uncomfortable. So separation anxiety comes in when the child has formed a dependence on you, the primary caregiver, the parent. The child is, a, is not feeling confident and capable to be without you. So that's wonderful in a way. and. I know it, some of you are thinking this, especially those, and there's a large portion of you who have your own anxiety, who will find yourself with separation anxiety in your kid. This is not to blame you. And I am very open about the fact that I have anxiety. So these are the types of things I need to keep in check for myself. And a lot of it is your need to control. When you feel unsta unsafe, unstable yourself, you often work in your external environment. Some people clean a lot, other people go to the gym a lot and, and do things like that. Some people just can't let things go, write to-do lists, try to control your partner, trying to control your children, whatever you need to do 
your schedule, yourself, your eating. We, we have different ways that we adapt to try and gain that control. And as a parent where it is a frightening role, we tend to do this as well. And you might not have anxiety yourself in general or as a disorder, but you might find yourself with some anxiety as a parent. It's a scary world. It is very scary trusting other people to look after your child, trusting that your child will be okay on their own. It's hard for you, and I'm going to say for you, when your child is uncomfortable, when your child is upset, when your child falls down and makes mistakes. And this is that kind of thing that is very difficult to grasp. And often I work with explaining a lot of the emotions and what emotions need to parents who are struggling with this because a lot of the questions I get when I try and get them to back off from overly helping children because that's what happens we we tend to jump in there all the time with our kids don't we when we 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 don't want them to fall because we've got cognitive functioning we've got the ability to think things through in the future and we can often see those consequences that's going to happen for the little one before they could even look at the consequence we can see this is going to end badly we can see that this is going to be a lot of heartache a lot of tears a lot of drama and sometimes we can laugh that off and say that's a part of growing up and sometimes we see the real pain in our children because just because the situation's a bit silly the child is feeling as much pain as you would be if you were in heartbreak or loss or trauma, it is traumatic to them because it's their feelings. This is their point of reference. Somebody is picking them on, picking on them at school, or they're just not making friends, or they can't seem to interact with people very well, or, or they're just not confident. They can't do things. They're too tentative and cautious to do things like these things happen, and it's extreme distress being away from you. Now do not for a second mistake this distress for healthy distress at just leaving you. Sometimes the kids do become very distressed when you drop them off. They don't want you to go. That's normal, that's natural, that's healthy. Being able to bounce back is how we gauge. So in my previous life, I was a childcare worker as well. So it's really handy when I say to parents, give them five minutes and they will be just fine. What you're seeing is horrible and distressing when you leave them. But childcare workers are very good at distracting and nurturing and transferring that onto them when you leave. And children do get distressed. They also bounce back. Kids are resilient. So they're fine and they might start getting a bit stroppy at the end of the day when they're ready to go home. That's also normal. When you get separation anxiety, often there's a question mark about what's going on for the child. Often I will have sent a child for a pediatric assessment just to make sure that there's nothing else going on. There's no hearing issues, eyesight issues, all of that kind of thing, which are good things to check out. The pediatrician is a good point of call if you're having ongoing problems. But coming from the practitioner side of things with someone who would be working with you with the separation anxiety, that is more when the child just changes behavior. They seem one way at home and another way at school. They can make friends if you're there maybe, but not on their own. They don't want to be left. They're fine until they know they have to go somewhere. You have trouble getting them in the car. They, sometimes I've seen children who just are rigid. They just stand there, otherwise active, thinking ADHD almost at home. They're so hyperactive. And then at school, they're just rigid. They're standing there and you think they might have some sort of disability. So there's all of that stuff. And oftentimes, you'll find... A little bit of further investigation. Mum's been doing most of the parenting. Dad's working long hours. Mum's so overstretched. There's other children. And she, she doesn't have any support. So she's taking the children everywhere with her. She's never getting time to herself, which I'm sure many of you are relating to as I'm speaking. 
not getting time to herself to remember who you were as a parent, as a person before you were a parent, who you were as a couple with your other half before you were a parent, having other roles outside of being a parent. Often women especially are self-sacrificing. They are so self-sacrificing and they're doing it for the child. But to actually do that is harmful to your child because you cannot be a machine that keeps going. There's no one in this world, no matter how much you love them, that you can be enmeshed with 24-7. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for the child. The child doesn't learn those valuable life skills. Childhood is a time where children play in an arena of life. Every single game is a life skill lesson. Every single relationship, problem in relationships, are life skill lessons. Everything that they're doing, every mistake, everything that, that they're learning is teaching them how to be in the world, how to be an independent person. Your goal is not to nurture and bubble wrap them so much that they always have this wonderful sense of belonging. Your job is to give them a sense of belonging that sits within them. Within them. So no matter what happens, if you were to leave, heaven forbid, if you were something were to happen to you, if they were to find themselves in a tricky situation from small things right up to life-threatening things, that you've given them enough life skills and internal resources to problem-solve, to trust, to pick themselves up, to believe in themselves, to push themselves, to endure, to figure things out, to rationalize, to see things in a healthy perspective, not to fear their emotions. So with that in mind, if your child is having separation anxiety, you need to look at yourself. How much are you allowing your child to do for themselves? How much are you encouraging them to do for themselves? How much time are you taking for yourself? How much time are you allowing them to be exposed to other people, other situations? How are you trusting them to get things done, to do things? Ask yourself those questions and where can you make some adjustments and where can you pick them up? The second thing here is that relationship with you. That is important. That is the crux of this. They're not actually feeling secure. It feels like they are when they're with you because they do feel secure when they're with you. But that doesn't mean that your child is secure. Quite the opposite. They are not feeling secure within themselves. They need you. They are dependent on you to feel secure. You need to turn that around and build them up. But you need to nurture and respect and love and build on that relationship and that connection with you. Your job is certainly not done. You, your job is still to remain incredibly connected. So there's some strategies that I like to give parents and that is how can you find a way to help your child feel connected to you when you're not there? This is great if your child, a lot of separation anxiety comes hand in hand with co-sleeping, where they come into your bed at night because they can't sleep in their own beds. Same thing. You give them something to help them feel safe. Is it a fluffy toy that they name, that they can get hugs? If they give the fluffy toy a hug, it magically gives them a hug from you. Is it a little note that you leave in their bag? Is it an item of clothing, a scarf, a glove, something that smells like you, a handkerchief that you spray your perfume on? What can you give them to help them feel connected with you? Make it a secret. You can go and check it in your bag or in your lunchbox. There's a little something from me and that's just for me and you. But you can do it. You want to praise, you want to encourage, and you want to work on creating separation and using other means to keep you guys connected and if this is if you're finding that you looking forward to them coming into the bed with you at night or you get a kick a little kick and it's okay if you do in them needing you that's when you need to look at yourself and your anxiety so i hope that's been helpful take it easy bye